G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Saturday morning here in Australia, market down again, so we're under that $2.3 trillion, still slowly climbing down, but there is some sort of hope uh, on the horizons and we'll have a look at that very shortly. But look, Bitcoin dominance still just under 40%, not a lot of volume, you know, the weekend's here. That'll generally happen, but it might sort of come through. Again, it's more sort of Friday night stateside time. So maybe Saturday, Sunday, we start to see the weekend pumps that we've seen on occasions uh, in crypto when the volume is low. Bitcoin price, unfortunately, under 50,000, just holding above 48,000. And gas prices, they're just kind of stuck around that $8.40. But what I want to do is, you know, there's that saying, when in doubt, when in doubt, scale out and I think that's a really good thing to do now we've got a whole stack of different sort of you know time prices so we got 24 hours seven days one month three months and six months so now we can have a look at how things are doing look at the moment Bitcoin's kind of stagnant it's down seven days it's definitely down over the last month but it's up in three months and I mean have a look at that in the last six months it's up 32 percent now can Bitcoin still keep going down absolutely it could but this is all kind of short-term pain. There is massive downsides in cryptocurrencies, period. If you haven't been here for very long, then you know, you're experiencing some of it now. And it can go down a whole lot lower. Bitcoin has gone down 80% at times. But over time, it always makes that ground back up. Now, we can't say the past is always going to be indicative of what's happening in the future. But it's the only thing we really have to give us an idea, the only way we can try and predict the future. Bitcoin is at 48,000. It was at 70,000. It's three quarters of the price that it was, a little bit under that. That's a discount. Again, I'm not saying, you know, number one, never financial advice. I say that every video and I have to because I'm not a financial advisor. But you want to buy something when it's at a discount. Now, is this the best price? It could be. It may not be, no one really knows. All I know is it is on a discount. And so that's why I'm buying Bitcoin at the moment. I'm not focusing too much on altcoins at the moment because the market's in a downtrend. I'd rather just be having my cash really sitting on the side and just chipping it away, a couple of the things that I really like until I see some kind of market change. And look, the market could change in the next five minutes. As soon as I finish this video, all of a sudden it could change and it may be for the extreme worse. We have a really big further crash or all of a sudden that was it the dip you know the bottoms in and it continues to go higher but again just kind of zoom out a little bit we all get caught up on you know the 24 hours the day and even maybe the month and this is terrible but then we go oh, actually you know we're still up five percent from three months ago five percent move in the traditional finance world over three months that's not too bad is it the greatest thing they've ever seen no but it's pretty good and we're all now crying about, you know, oh, we're down 30% in a month, but still up 5% for three months and up 30% over the last six months. And, we, you know, Bitcoin and the crypto market has been super choppy over the last six months. And we'll have a look at that shortly. So again, Ethereum, yeah, it's down. It's hurting a little bit if you've been in it for a month. But if you've been in it for six months, you're up 70%. You've nearly doubled your money. BNB nearly doubled your money you're not too far off so that's the things we got to remember now Solana uh, I am it's been I think I was buying it for around 171 178 dollars so any profits I made on Solana is down but I haven't been in it for six months and anyone who has is up 300 percent and if you go you know nine months or a year you're up crazy amounts so again all this short-term stuff yep it can hurt and I mean look XRP is just getting absolutely you know thumped but that's the way it is I mean you know look at polka dot down over the last few months but six months it's up 28 percent imagine going to the stock market and trying to get 28 percent it'll probably take you a year or more to get 28 percent on most stocks let alone six months so things we need to remember i mean look at luna that's just uh been doing extremely well but it's starting to see a correction and again that's just the markets in general so again scale out this all hurts the short-term stuff but avax 83% in three months, 520% in six months. Shiba Inu, I mean, have a look at that. It's still up if you've been in it for six months. You're still doing extremely well. In the last month or two, no, that's probably going to hurt. Three to six months, you're well up. 
Crow, have a look at that. I mean, you can just go down the list now. Unfortunately, uni's been getting slaughtered. This has been one of my worst investments. I didn't get the airdrop, uh, and then I bought in at what I thought was good prices, and yeah, it's been monstered. But I didn't put a whole lot in. If it goes to zero, and I know some coins will have... I mean, uh, and again, I'm not saying uni's going to zero, but if you basically make no money, then you've got to be able to accept those losses. And that's in all investing. That's not just like a cryptocurrency thing. You can get into the stock market and all of a sudden something that you're into, Facebook, for whatever reason, you know, it's been slowly, you know, dying off. Uh, it's nowhere near as popular as what it is. That could eventually just disappear, but it's one of the biggest stocks right now. Those are things that happen. What's big now may not be big in another, you know, one year let alone 10 to 20 30 years that's investing there for you ladies and gentlemen it's not a an easy game you don't just go right out well that's the thing and put all your money into it and think that it's guaranteed to work because it might have worked really well in the past but then not in the future and that's you know maybe bitcoin you know people talking about it getting flipped by eth maybe bitcoin loses that dominance but then again maybe it doesn't it's still too early to know but again, based on the past, on the way it's performed, it's a that's the best indication of how we think it will perform in the future. But again, it won't play out exactly the same as what everyone thinks. And everyone thought, you know, December was the month. Everything was going all time highs, revving this big, you know, blow off top, and it hasn't happened. And my personal opinion is, I don't think it's going to happen. I think it's going to be that you know long drawn out process. I think we're going down further from here. But again, that's just my opinion and nothing more. But again, we look at this six months, most things are up. There are some that are down, but not that much. I mean, Chainlink, great projects. It's only down 10% in the last six months. So if you've been holding, it's not so bad. But gee, over the last little bit, particularly the last month, you've really been hurt. 79% uh, up for OKB, 300% up for Mana, 2,000% up for Axie Infinity in six months. Tron for god's sake that's up 30 percent near protocol 240 percent so scale out don't get too caught up in this you know short-term stuff could it get worse absolutely do i think it's going to get worse unfortunately yes do i think it will eventually turn around absolutely we may be in the bear market we may be seeing you know that bear markets are just things that kind of last a few months like we've been in and they again might be sort of a whole lot more common because the big money's coming they know how to manipulate markets to make them you know look like things are truly horrible to get you to panic sell and get out and then they will just let it go and pump it to you know to the absolute moon You've just got to be able to hold and have a longer term perspective. If you're here thinking I'm going to get in and in you know six months I'm going to you know make millions of dollars, unless you're getting into something like Gala Games or Axie Infinity at the really right time, they're they're not common. They really aren't. But most of these cryptos over the last six months are up substantially. Not all of them, but most of them. So it is kind of easy to make money in the crypto markets. But it's just, you know, that flash in the pan, chuck in, you know, a thousand, ten thousand dollars and become a, you know, billionaire like in Sheeb or something like that. Yeah, that's, you know, they are exceptions to the norm. But generally, it's not that hard to make money in crypto in the longer term. The shorter term, super volatile. So that's just what I wanted to show you. A lot of projects, you know, the last three months to a month not doing so well. More, more so a month, but sort of six months plus, most of them are doing pretty good considering. So what I wanna do is go over to the Bitcoin chart and have a look where we're at. All right, so again, this is what I suspect may happen. I'm not saying it will happen, it's just what I suspect. So we're already coming down and testing this $47,000 level. Will we come down and you know revisit this kind of $42,000 level? And will we push through that and come down and cover excuse me, the CME gap that exists between 32,500 and 34,500. Now, a sort of good wick down doesn't have to go to the bottom of 32,500 to cover the gap. It really just has to kind of get in there somewhere. So I went sort of the middle, let's say about $33,500. That is what I think could happen. We kind of play around, maybe sort of get down into the 40, you know, two-ish thousand dollar level. We have a really big wick down just out of nowhere, something crazy to cover that gap. And then I think we have a V-shaped recovery. Now, am I 100% sold that this is what's happening? 
No, I'm not. This is just what I suspect could happen. But at the moment, there is a lot of support around this $47,000 range. So again, for me, I don't mind buying Bitcoin around here. Am I throwing all my money into it? No, because I don't know where the market's going. I just have ideas where I think it could and might go. All right, we're down to this target. It's got lots of confluence. Where's the next target? All right, I'll be starting to set some buy orders in down around sort of forty to $42,000 because this would be another good place to pick up some Bitcoin, in my personal opinion. Would it be the best uh, place to pick it up? It might be because maybe it goes down to here and that's it. Then we're back off to the races. But maybe it's not because we go down and we're in the bear market that everyone thinks we're not in. There are always things you just have to keep in mind. You've got to have more than one train of thought. You can't be completely sold that your one thesis is the thesis. My th main thesis is we're still in a bull market and this is just corrective uh, and, you know, it's not just manipulation, but I think there's manipulation going on. But it's also, you know, the coronavirus and SEC stuff. There's a whole host of sort of factors that are in there that are making this happen because other markets are getting hit as well. It's not just crypto. S&P 500 is all over the place. The Dow Jones is all over the place. So it is a worldwide market effect. It's not just a single market effect that is having issues at the moment. So... 47 at the moment, it looks like pretty good support. We're really struggling to break through that. So for me, I, I like buying Bitcoin around here, particularly considering it was at 70,000. So you only have to go down another sort of $10,000 and you're buying Bitcoin at sort of half price. This is half price Bitcoin. That sounds even better. But anything that's sort of a 20 to 30% discount sounds good to me. So where are we buying at the moment? We go from here to where it is now. There you go. That's your 30% discount right there. Not 30% of the total value of it, but it's 30% from where it was. I like that. Actually, it is nearly 30% of total, total value. 70,000 down to sort of 50,000, you're not too far off. So that's the way I look at it. Is it the best price to buy it? I don't know. Time's only gonna be able to tell us that. But for me, I like Bitcoin at 47, 48,000. I'm buying. If it goes down to, again, 42,000, guess what I'm doing? I'm buying. If it goes down to 36,000, 32,000, guess what? I'm buying. There's really no price that Bitcoin can go to that I'm not buying if it is under an old all-time high. It's just how much money I'm putting into it that will change. If we're in an obvious bear trend, then I'm just chipping away at Bitcoin and really having you know, most of my cash sit on the side waiting for a change, a reversal. I'm not going to focus too much on altcoins. It's not to say I won't throw in little bits at altcoins here and there, ones that I really like, because I don't know when the whole system, when the, not the whole system, when the market will change. I really don't, and no one does. So I will just kind of focus on, uh, you yeah, know, again, Bitcoin mainly. Every now and then when we get down to a level, if, you know, Bitcoin's suddenly at, you know, $36,000, then I might go, right, here, here's... Uh, a space and particularly down here around the CME gap where I might throw some money at some altcoins it won't be a lot it'll be a very small amount just in case that that's the bottom and then it starts to go up because I'll have been incrementally getting into everything on the way down that I like but mainly Bitcoin and again mainly leaving cash on the side that's my plan this is what I think could happen and if I'm wrong, and I'd be more than happy to be wrong, and this is the bottom, and it all starts to rocket up, awesome. I've got cash on the side. I've already had my bags packed for a really long time. So, you know, it'll be great. But I am not 100% sold that that is the only thing that can happen. I've always got to be able to change my thesis, change my narrative based on all sorts of factors. At the moment... I get the feeling like this is probably going to be a pretty good area of support because we've been here before. It's been resistance and then it's been support a number of times, but that doesn't matter. That doesn't mean this can't fold. And then, yeah, we're going to 42,000 and maybe that is the bottom. Then again, maybe not. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is my sort of thesis on Bitcoin. I think this is a good area of support. I think it's a good place to buy some Bitcoin. A lot of other people are buying Bitcoin, but it just doesn't mean that we can't go lower. And a lot of people, actually I'll get onto this, probably are wondering how is it that all these on-chain suppliers are showing all this but the price continues to go down? 
big institutions, big money, don't buy on the spot market. They buy OTC. That doesn't affect the market. Now, here's the way they can continually suppress the price, though, is if you continually buy OTC, and particularly depending on how much you're buying, you're getting a discount. You're not paying the spot price when you buy BTC. So there's already some arbitrage there. It's not a whole lot unless you buy a whole lot of Bitcoin, then they might be willing to do you a better deal, those who are willing to sell. So all right, Bitcoin, let's just round it off. It's at $48,000. You're buying at OTC for $47,000 and maybe even a little bit less if you're really buying, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars worth or whatever it is. You can then take some of that and put it onto the spot market and consistently sell it. Not a lot, just a little bit. And that suppresses the price. And you continually buy more Bitcoin for 47,000 when it's at 48,000 and if it goes down to 47,000 and you continually selling just little bits here and there all of a sudden you're buying OTC for 46,000 and so on and so on now eventually that will dry up that just people are not going to want to sell and there's or you know their money's going to have run out from the people that are doing that and the price will then either have to dump because everyone panics and sells all of it or eventually it starts to rise so that is what's happening. There's all sorts of other tricks that they can do, but I really do think that's one of the tricks at the moment. They are buying OTC and then selling little bits here and there, but it's also, again, panic in the market, retail and all the rest of it. But that is a tactic of how to suppress markets. That is what big players will do. Is that what they're doing right now? I have no idea. I'm not a big player. I'm not seeing what's going on, but it is something that I suspect is going on. But again, there's all sorts of whale games and environmental factors. Right, so let's move on. Just a couple of stories I want to focus on. All right, Parallel Finance has won Polkadot's fourth parachain auction with $306 million in DOT locked up. So, you know, Polkadot has not fared as well as what I would like. I really thought uh, it was going to do so much better. It's not that it hasn't done you know kind of well and okay depending on when you get in but i really thought this was going to be something that was massive considering it was gavin woods you know one of the ethereum creators that built it but parachains they are selling lots of uh, money being put into them uh, and another sort of finance aka sort of DeFi uh, parachain has been added so we saw a carla or akala i'm not sure how it's said i've heard it's a carla so uh, carla one one and now parallel uh, finances one one so that's the fourth parachain and I think there's 98 parachains or something I can't even remember off the top of my head I will have a look and follow that up but another parachain has finally been locked in for Polkadot all right crypto firms have spent five million dobber, dobbers <laughs> have spent five million dollars lobbying senate in the first three quarters of 2021 so unfortunately, this is what the world that we kind of live in. You know, you need, you need to grease people's pockets to get them to be favorable. And obviously, it has started to pay off, though. There are a number of senators and things like that. And not just in the States. This is going to happen all over the world that are starting to become a lot more crypto friendly. And it's not simply because crypto is this new uh, great tech. There is obviously some of this going on where, you know, people are paying, you know, taking people out to dinners and lunches and whining them, dining them, you know, all that kind of stuff to get favorable outcomes. And it does sound kind of scammy, but, you know, they're not being bribed in the true sense of they're just being given money. Hey, give us the result we want. Uh, again, this is what they call lobbying. So, uh I mean, look, it seems to be working at the moment because there's definitely a lot more crypto-friendly regulation that seems to be coming and people are starting to warm up to it. And I think it is a combination of, you know, this happening, the lobbying, but also they just can now see the upside. You know, they've, you know, they've their eyes have been open to crypto. They've gone and had a look and they probably now understand the yep, super volatile because it's a super small market. It's a whole lot easier to kind of manipulate smaller markets and while we like to think crypto is a big market, it's a tiny drop in the ocean in comparison to all the money out there. So it's quite easy for big players to come in. And, you know, they may have trillions of dollars uh, under assets or billions of dollars at least. I don't know about trillions, but let's say billions of dollars assets uh, under management. You want to take $500 million out of a billion or billions, that's not much. And you can do a whole lot of money 
Uh, you can do a whole lot of sort of uh, market movement and manipulation with $500 million in the crypto markets, let alone, you know, maybe billions of dollars from the hundreds of billions that they have in AUM. So that's what we need to remember. It's still a very, very small market and hence why it's easy for these big players to come over. Now, they don't want to risk too much because, you know, they can't afford to lose too much. But again, a couple of hundred million, even a couple of billion dollars to firms that may have a couple of, sorry, a couple of billion dollars to firms that may have a couple of hundred billion dollars locked up in uh, assets under management. They can afford to do that. And again, the upside, if crypto works out, will be massive and will make up more than make up for any losses that they might make. All right, last but not least, I mean, the NFT space, it just continues to, <laughs> it just doesn't stop. It slows down, but it really is just continuing to get bigger and bigger. Now, a rare crypto punk has sold for a record $10.2 million. So it's two and a half thousand ETH. I can't imagine having two and a half thousand ETH. That would be so amazing, let alone to take that two and a half thousand ETH and put it into a crypto punk. Now it's one of the eight ones. I think there was 21, they said, 21 or 24 different. Uh, yep, there's only 24 uh, eight ones out of the 10,000 and $10.2 million that sold for set a new record so yeah this nft space uh yeah just never ceases to amaze me i really thought it was gonna die off not die off but you know slow right down uh and i am sort of starting to believe that it really is going to be a lot bigger than what people can think at least over the long term short term different story we could have a whole lot of things go on and again maybe we go through a bear market the last six months but I still think NFTs and even the metaverse. Again, I wasn't as sold on the metaverse as what I am now. I definitely think it really is going to be an absolute behemoth. Now it's just trying to find the projects that are actually going to last because there's plenty out there now and they seem really popular now, but it will take time to work out exactly which ones are going to last. Again, you can just go back to the crypto markets in 2017, coins like NEO. And I'm not trying to throw shade on NEO, but that was like, the next big thing you hardly hear of neo anymore it's not that it's not doing anything not there but it's just been completely eclipsed uh eos another perfect example you know completely eclipsed so all these nfts that seem really popular now the good ones will rise to the top the others will fall uh to the wayside and be worth nothing and it'll be same with all these metaverse plays and gaming plays you know the good ones will stay at the top and all the rest will just kind of fade into oblivion. Uh, and even I've learned, I've put money into cryptos that are still you know, worth a bit of money now, but they're nowhere near worth what they were before. And they may never come back. And I am really going to make sure that I'm a lot better at taking profits moving forwards because I just haven't done it anywhere well enough. I've got some good plays. You know, I think Ethereum's going to do fine over the next sort of decade. We've it's not 100% sold on that because we have to wait and see what happens with ETH 2.0. I think Bitcoin's going to be fine, but outside of those two, yeah, I want to make sure that I take a lot of profits. Matic's looking really good, but again, we still need to just wait and see what happens. And I haven't taken profits anywhere near as much as what I should have. Uh, and I am going to make sure that I am a lot better at doing that in the future. All right, that's it from me. Again, zoom out. That's really what I wanted to say. Six months, things are still looking pretty good. It's just the last couple of months, things aren't looking good. But again, we go to this Bitcoin chart. So everyone was... Oops, sorry, this is what I want. And then we go back to here. Everyone was super stoked. This is amazing, this is amazing. Uh, it's not so good. Oh, it's amazing. And now we're here and ah, oh, it's not so good. You know, the not so good are generally fairly short lived. And as the big money is here right now, I don't know if we're going to have the same kind of bear markets. We'll have to wait and see. It's still possible. Definitely still possible. But I just don't know if we'll ever see those kind of bear markets that we've seen in the past. I think maybe these could become the new bear markets. Maybe these are the, are the bear markets. They last, what, April to July, you know? A couple of months of bearish, followed by a couple of months of bullish. A couple of months of bearish, followed by a couple of months of bullish. Time will tell. All right, stay safe. Be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment, but if you are, congratulations to you because you've outplayed the market. 
and I'll see you next time.